Hey, welcome to the Riggin Farm YouTube channel. Our bees came in. Ashley and I were planning on coming up to the farm anyway today, and as we were getting ready, we got a call from the post office saying that our bees had arrived. So we stopped at the post office on our way up here and grabbed the bees. We were really hoping that the bees wouldn't come in until tomorrow, but they're here, so we have to do what we can. The only thing we're gonna be able to get done while at the farm today is get the hive set up and the fence put around it. We don't have a waterer or a feeder set up for them, so we're gonna to have to take them home with us when we're done. We're not supposed to release the bees into the hive until evening time, so we'll come back up tomorrow with that completed waterer and feeder set up and release them into the hive. So if you don't already, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you get notified when that vlog comes out so you can see us getting our bees put into the hive. All right, no more time to waste. We need to go up there and get started. We're gonna set up our beehive right here. So Ashley is using the rake to kind of smooth this area out. And then we're going to put a tree stump down and put the beehive right on top of that. We found this remnant from the loggers and thought it would be a pretty good hive stand. It works out pretty well because the bottom board actually fits perfectly in this little broken off piece of tree. Now we're putting down the first deep box. Now we have the T-posts set up and the insulators for the electric wire on there. Next thing, and the thing I'm not looking forward to, is getting the really heavy electric wire strung up. While I was holding the spool, Ashley and I walked around the perimeter so that we could measure an approximate length of wire for each pass. So now that we have that cut, we can measure seven pieces about the same length so we don't have to carry the spool around for each pass because it's really heavy and I'd rather do it this way because it's smarter. We've done a few strands now and we think we have a system. So we start one end right there and pull it. It goes over and then under. I'm gonna pull it tight as we go along. Here's the other corner. Last corner here. Now that we're at the end, we get some pliers, make a little hook on this end, make another little hook. On. They're relatively loose, which is fine. We'll just crimp this side down, and then this side we can kind of pull. Okay. 
make it a little tighter. And crimp it. Twist a little bit more. Get it as tight as we can. We got all the electric wire up now, or at least the horizontal strands. We're gonna do some vertical strands as well on the bottom so that there's less space for little critters to get through. One thing we learned is as you work your way up, the top corners go in a little bit more. So as we finally got to the top, each layer below had a lot of slack. So we had to kind of pull it and twist it in order to get them nice and tight so that they weren't loose. So they're a little mangled. They're not pretty, but they're functional. And that's what matters. For the vertical pieces, we cut a bunch of wire that's just a little bit larger than the gap there. You just create some hooks on the ends. Put them on there, close them with the pliers. They don't need to be super snug, they just need to stay on there relatively well. They can slide and that's fine. We're doing this for two main reasons. The first is so the smaller critters that get in here will have a greater chance of actually hitting the wire and they won't be able to slip through as easily. But the main reason we're doing vertical wires is because we need to connect the horizontal wires so that when we energize it, power goes to every single strand and the entire thing is electrified rather than just one of the seven strands going around horizontally. We've completed the temporary fencing to protect our beehive. Hopefully this will do what we need. We have seven horizontal strands of wire and then we have three rows of vertical wire going around. The bottom four rows are connected with three to four pieces of vertical wire. That not only connects them to energize the upper portions of the wire, it'll also create a little bit of a barrier for smaller animals. A bear walking through would be less likely to stick his head through that. And if he does, he's probably not gonna be too happy if he gets shocked. We took away the solar energizer from our chicken coop at the house because they were getting over the fence anyway. It didn't really do anything. We decided to go ahead and just bring it up here. It's facing south and is getting plenty of sun exposure. So hopefully, as long as we don't have several really great dreary days in a row, the battery will stay fully charged. So this will always be electrified. Maybe asking yourself, how are we gonna get through the fence? Because obviously we need to get to the bees. I'll show you. We have our beehive and fence installed. We got everything put up into our shipping container and it's time for us to head home and get some kids from school. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell so you get updates of when our new videos get posted. Go ahead and hit the like button and comment below and let us know what you think of what's going on on our farm. Things are getting really exciting. We have our bees, our home is about two months away from completion, and we've gotten a lot done for the garden already. As I mentioned earlier, we're gonna go ahead and come up tomorrow with the bees and get their food and water set up and release them into the hive. We'll see you next time. Bye.